Section 18 of Canadian Wonder Tales. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Canadian Wonder Tales by Cyrus Macmillan. Section 18. The Indian Cinderella. On the shores of a wide bay on the Atlantic coast there dwelt in old times a great Indian warrior. It was said that he had been one of Glooskap's best helpers and friends, and that he had done for him many wonderful deeds, but that no man knows. He had, however, a very wonderful and strange power. He could make himself invisible. He could thus mingle unseen with his enemies and listen to their plots. He was known among the people as Strong Wind the Invisible. He dwelt with his sister in a tent near the sea, and his sister helped him greatly in his work. Many maidens would have been glad to marry him, and he was much sought after because of his mighty deeds and it was known that Strong Wind would marry the first maiden who could see him as he came home at night. Many made the trial, but it was a long time before one succeeded. Strong Wind used a clever trick to test the truthfulness of all who sought to win him. Each evening as the day went down, his sister walked on the beach with any girl who wished to make the trial. His sister could always see him, but no one else could see him. And as he came home from work in the twilight, his sister, as she saw him drawing near, would ask the girl who sought him, Do you see him? And each girl would falsely answer, Yes. And his sister would ask, With what does he draw his sled? And each girl would answer, With the hide of a moose, or with a pole, or with a great cord. And then his sister would know that they all had lied, for their answers were mere guesses. And many tried and lied and failed, for strong wind would not marry any who were untruthful. There lived in the village a great chief who had three daughters. Their mother had been long dead. One of these was much younger than the others. She was very beautiful and gentle and well-beloved by all, and for that reason her older sisters were very jealous of her charms and treated her very cruelly. They clothed her in rags that she might be ugly, and they cut off her long black hair, and they burned her face with coals from the fire that she might be scarred and disfigured, and they lied to their father, telling him that she had done these things herself but the young girl was patient and kept her gentle heart and went gladly about her work. Like other girls, the chief's two eldest daughters tried to win Strong Wind. One evening, as the day went down, they walked on the shore with Strong Wind's sister and waited for his coming. Soon he came home from his day's work, drawing his sled, and his sister asked as usual, Do you see him? And each one lying answered, Yes. And she asked, Of what is his shoulder strap made? and each guessing said, Of rawhide. Then they entered the tent where they hoped to see Strong Wind eating his supper, and when he took off his coat and his moccasins they could see them, but more than these they saw nothing. And Strong Wind knew that they had lied, and he kept himself from their sight, and they went home dismayed. One day the chief's youngest daughter with her rags and her burnt face resolved to seek Strong Wind. She patched her clothes with bits of birch bark from the trees, and put on the few little ornaments she possessed, and went forth to try to see the invisible one as all the other girls of the village had done before. And her sisters laughed at her and called her fool, and as she passed along the road all the people laughed at her because of her tattered frock and her burnt face. But silently she went her way. Strong Wind's sister received the little girl kindly, and at twilight she took her to the beach. Soon Strong Wind came home drawing his sled, and his sister asked, Do you see him? And the girl answered, No. And his sister wondered greatly because she spoke the truth. And again she asked, Do you see him now? And the girl answered, Yes, and he is very wonderful. And she asked, With what does he draw his sled? And the girl answered, With the rainbow. And she was much afraid. And she asked further, Of what is his bowstring? And the girl answered, His bowstring is the Milky Way. Then Strong Wind's sister knew that because the girl had spoken the truth at first, her brother had made himself visible to her. And she said, Truly, you have seen him. And she took her home and bathed her, and all the scars disappeared from her face and body, and her hair grew long and black again like the raven's wing. And she gave her fine clothes to wear and many rich ornaments. Then she bade her take the wife's seat in the tent. Soon Strong Wind entered and sat beside her, and called her his bride. The very next day she became his wife, and ever afterwards she helped him to do great deeds. The girl's two elder sisters were very cross, and they wondered greatly at what had taken place. But Strong Wind, who knew of their cruelty, resolved to punish them. 
Using his great power, he changed them both into aspen trees and rooted them in the earth. And since that day, the leaves of the aspen have always trembled, and they shiver in fear at the approach of strong wind. It matters not how softly he comes, for they are still mindful of his great power and anger because of their lies and their cruelty to their sister long ago. End of section 18. Recording by Sean Michael Hogan, St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada.